Good morning, church. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles at this time to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, and we're going to be looking at verse 11 this morning as we continue in our Summer in the Psalms series. Now, the 119th Psalm is the longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. And it's basically a collection of personal thoughts and prayers about God's Word. And its overall message is that the knowledge and practical application of Scripture will guard God's people from sin and guide us into living more holy lives for Him. So, do you want to grow in godliness? Well, according to Psalm 119, you've got to get into the Word of God. And as we're now going to see more specifically in Psalm 119, verse 11, you need to get the word of God into you. So verse 11, the psalmist writes, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. In the two world wars of the last century, maps played a vital role in successful warfare with new technologies like aerial photography, and also a new emphasis on intelligence gathering, military cartographers or map makers were able to produce detailed, up-to-date maps like never before. And this enabled military forces to strike the enemy with much greater accuracy and success. Commanding officers would use these maps to strategically plan new missions, and then each unit would use the same maps on the field to carry out those missions. However, as we can imagine in battle, taking out a a map and pouring over it was often not an option. It would be too dangerous. And so the commanding officers, as well as the men in their units, were encouraged to memorize these maps so that in the middle of fighting they could just immediately and instinctively choose the best course of action. How well the soldiers had memorized these maps made all the difference. In fact, it often made the difference between victory and defeat or even life and death. Now churches, we just read in our text, the same essential principle is true for God's people with the word of God and the war against sin. As memorizing maps was vital to winning the first and second world wars, so memorizing scripture is vital to winning the war against sin in our lives. And we see this principle develop here in our text as we consider, first of all, the matter of memorization. Clearly, the psalmist is promoting what we would call scripture memorization today. And he describes it in an interesting way, which we can break down into three parts. First is your word. That's a general term for biblical revelation, which is God's word. He's the your here. He's the source of all scripture that Paul says in 2 Timothy 3.16 is breathed out by God. Now, it's no wonder that the psalmist goes on, notice in verse 14, to say, In your way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. In other words, if scripture is God's word, well, what could be more valuable than that? Now, what do you do then with a precious, invaluable treasure like that? Well, the verse goes on. I have stored up your word. Now in the Hebrew, it can be translated hidden as it is in the NIV. And it communicates the idea of carefully laying up a valuable treasure so that it cannot be lost, but rather can be easily retrieved. So imagine receiving a a priceless family heirloom and then carefully storing it in a safe in your home so that it it can't be lost, no one can ever steal it, and also it's, it's always in a place, a safe place that you can go in and retrieve it and you can enjoy that heirloom. Well, that's what we are to do with God's word, what we are to do with the greatest, most valuable treasure in the world. We're to store it up. 
Look at what the psalmist says later in verse 72 as he emphasizes just how valuable this treasure is. He says, The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. And then later in verse 127, he says a similar thing. Therefore, I love your commandments above gold, above fine gold. It's a wonderful, priceless, invaluable treasure that we are to store up. Where? Where are we to put away this prize? Well, that takes us to the third and final part of this section. I've stored up your word in my heart. Now, the heart in the Old Testament refers to the whole person, the, the mind, the will, and the affections. And so to hide God's word in our heart means to store it up inside of us securely. The common expression today, off by heart, kind of gets at the psalmist's meaning here. When I say I, I know something off by heart, it means I've, I've memorized it so well that it's, it's deep inside of me. It's almost a part of me so that now I can just naturally uh, bring it up. I can naturally recall it, which is a wonderful thing. Because if I have a treasure hidden inside of me like that, no one can ever take it away. God's word is in the safest possible place. Corey Ten Boom discovered this when she was imprisoned by the Nazis in World War II. Though her Bible was taken away from her hands, no one could take it away from her heart, which would be the source of strength and steadfast faith under terrible suffering. But the location of the heart is also significant because it reminds us that God's word is not to be recalled and recited in just some indifferent academic way. That's not what scripture memorization is all about. But rather, it is to be taken inside of us so that it can be believed in the mind, obeyed from the will, and loved by the affections. That's what it ultimately means to store up God's word in our heart. That's what it's to produce. And we actually see that idea in the previous verse, verse 10. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. When we store up God's word in our heart inside of us, it changes us from the inside out. Or that's at least what it's supposed to do. A few years ago, I... I read about a seminary professor who was studying Hebrew in Israel, and he met a man who claimed to have memorized the entire Old Testament in Hebrew. Now, the professor had his doubts about this, and so he asked for a demonstration. And for the next two hours, he, he followed along in his Hebrew Bible while this man recited it flawlessly, without mistake. The professor just sat stunned in silence. But what was much more astonishing to him was later when he found out that this man who had memorized the entire Old Testament in its original language was an atheist. He had God's word stored up in his head, but not in his heart. Which is in complete contrast to the psalmist who said, I have stored it up within as we see here and later, it therefore has transformed me. Look at what he says in verse 111 and 112 later on. He says, your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. It, it affected his affections. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. It also affected his will, his actions. And so that's what memorization is. That's the matter of memorization. It's your word stored up in my heart. Which takes us to the second part of this verse and what we might call the man of memorization. Notice how the verse is written in the first person. I have stored up your word. That means this is a personal prayer by the psalmist, possibly David. But clearly, it's, it's recorded here for a public purpose. 
The psalmist is saying, I have stored up your word in my heart in order to exhort God's people to go and do likewise, so that we all can say, I have stored up your word. In fact, this psalm, like all the others, was meant to be sung in worship by all of Israel, men, women, and children. This means that scripture memorization is for all believers, past and present. Okay, not just for a few super spiritual people or those with amazing natural memories or those who just have a lot of time on their hands and can do this. No, it is for every God-fearing man, woman, and child. Speaking to the entire church in Colossae, the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, which certainly includes scripture memorization. We all are to do this. We all are to say, I have stored up your word in my heart. Now, someone will surely object to this, want to qualify this and say, you know, you don't understand. I'm way too busy for this. How can a, an overworked, overscheduled 21st century person like me possibly find time to memorize scripture? Well, the man who wrote this verse somehow did. And though we don't know exactly who it was, again, maybe it was David, we're not sure. But we do know that along with all of the demanding duties of ancient life, which would probably put our schedules to shame as far as the kind of things that they needed to do just to survive, this man, this psalmist, was also severely persecuted. We read in verse 22 to 23, Take away from me scorn and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Even those princes sit plotting against me. Your servants will meditate on your statutes. And then later in verse 50 to 51, we see this again. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. The insolent utterly deride me, but I do not turn away from your law. So despite all of the demands he faced just in normal ancient life, but also the difficulties of affliction, of, of persecution. Nevertheless, the psalmist found time to memorize scripture. And if he could find the time, certainly we can too. We just have to make up our minds to do it. We have to make it a priority. I once read about a man uh, named Andy Davis. He's a pastor. And despite all of his busyness of life and ministry, uh, even in the midst of that, earning a PhD, serving on some mission boards, he memorized throughout his ministry 42 books of the Bible. It was so important to him that he found time to do this. And if he can, well, we can too. Maybe not 42 books, but we can certainly start somewhere. Okay, the same person might say, but, but he, I'm sure, has some kind of an exceptional memory, and I, I just don't. Well, actually, Pastor Davis admits in the article I read that he doesn't have the greatest memory. And as far as I can tell, most people who make scripture memorization a priority just have ordinary memories. They just choose to use them for this specific purpose. The truth is, we all can remember things that are important to us. We can all remember birthdays, anniversaries, phone numbers. In fact, I've found often the same people who say, I can't memorize scripture, are the same people who can sing word for word their favorite song from 20 or 30 years ago, um, can effortlessly quote their favorite TV shows, and rattle off stats of their fav favorite team without any trouble. If you can do that, or, or if you can even just remember some important basic information at work or school or recall a, a password or, or recite a few lines in a play, you can memorize some scripture. Pearl Collingsgrove was a, became a Christian at age 79, and despite being blind and only having a grade three education, she memorized hundreds of Bible verses through audio tape uh, in her early Christian life. Now, as a former entertainer, Pearl began singing these memorized verses while playing guitar. And soon she was invited to sing them and inspire other believers in her community. 
For her, neither age, blindness, or lack of education kept her from memorizing Scripture. And let's be honest, neither should anything then stop us from doing the same. Because if there is a will, we know God will make a way. Just think of one of the most memorized verses out there, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And certainly that includes memorizing God's word. Now, yes, I understand that, someone will say. But, but as hard as I try, Scripture just, it never seems to stick. Right? I want to have a, a mind and a heart full of God's word, but I leak. Those scriptures just seem to never stay. I know it off by heart for maybe a week, but, but after that it's gone. And especially when I try to then memorize more scripture, it's like it pushes out the ones I memorized previously. Well, I can certainly sympathize with that. I think most Christians can, anyone who's tried to memorize scripture. Storing scripture short-term is one thing, but long-term, that can be very difficult. However, there's one way I've found to keep God's word in your memory bank more permanently. It's a simple way that's often overlooked, and simply this. As you are memorizing a particular passage, be sure to do what it says. If you put that passage into action, or if you share that passage with someone else, or, or teach it, it will stick around much more easily and much long, longer. Years ago, a, a new Christian in Korea visited a, the missionary who had led him to Christ at a mission station that he'd been assigned to a few months earlier. The young man actually walked hundreds of miles, and his main purpose was to recite some scripture he had memorized to this missionary because the missionary's last words to the man months earlier was, you should really get to, to memorizing some scripture. And so he immediately recited to him the entire Sermon on the Mount without error. Well, after commending him, the missionary then warned the new believer that he must not only say the scriptures, but practice them too. With a big grin on his face, the man said, Oh, well, that is actually the way I learned them. I tried to memorize them, but it wouldn't stick, so I hit on this plan. First, I would learn the verse... Then I would practice what the verse said on one of my neighbors who was not a Christian. And after that, I easily remembered them. Friends, I would encourage you to consider doing the same. But whatever you do, just make sure you do it. Again, this is an instruction for all of us, all of God's people, to store up God's word in our hearts. Well, that takes us to the final part of this verse and the motivation for memorization. Whenever you see words that or so that when studying a Bible passage, take note because it signifies that the author is now giving you the, the reason or the purpose for what he just wrote or in this verse, what he just did as an example for us. And so we read, I've stored up your word in my heart that... I might not sin against you. So why did the psalmist memorize scripture? And why should we do the same? Well, the purpose is plain. That I might not sin against you. In other words, to keep us from sinning against God, from breaking his law and wandering from his good life-giving commandments. Commenting on this verse, Charles Haddon Spurgeon wrote, His heart would be kept by the word because he kept the word in his heart. There is no hiding from sin unless we hide the truth in our souls. What a great way of putting it. Now, could there be any greater motivation for memorizing scripture as believers? I mean, at our heart of hearts, is that not our greatest desire? Right? To live more holy lives, to grow in godliness, to be kept from sin. Again, Spurgeon said, Here is the best thing, thy word hidden, in the best place, my heart, for the best purpose, that I might not sin against thee. That's the purpose of memorization. 
We see the same thing in Psalm 37, 31. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. It's a great image. And again, great motivation for memorizing scripture. Now, how exactly does God's word in us do this when stored up in our hearts? How does it keep us from sin? How does it help us to not slip off the righteous way? Well, first, it guards us from the way of sin. Look up in verse 9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Church, there are powerful spiritual forces at work outside of us and inside of us that want to deter, defeat, and destroy our faith and our progress in the Christian life. They are the world, the devil, and the flesh, all of which Paul mentions in Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. And listen, there's only one spiritual weapon that can successfully fight off and fend off these forces. Paul calls it the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in Ephesians 6, 17. Now, what would be better to have that spiritual weapon of the word of God sometimes with us when we're holding it or all the time with us because it's in our hearts? Well, always, of course. The only way that's possible is if it is stored up in our hearts. Then no matter what the attack, we can defend ourselves from our spiritual enemies, day or night, in public or private, when we're ready for it or when we're caught by surprise. Those weapons, that sword of the Spirit, is always on hand. We will be ready to respond like Jesus did when he was tempted by Satan in Matthew 4. How did he respond? It is written, It is written. It is written. He had the word stored in his heart. And he had just the right weapon for just the right moment of temptation. So that means then the more scripture stored up in us, the better equipped for battle we will be. Right? John 3.16, probably the most memorized verse in the Bible. Well, that might be the right weapon for the Holy Spirit to wield and win certain battles, definitely. But to have victory in many other different spiritual battles, we need a much more diverse arsenal. We need scriptural swords from the whole Bible in order to arm us, in order to arm the Spirit so that he can fight off temptations we will face. And so that's the first reason, the first way that scripture stored in our hearts, memorized, can keep us from sin. It guards us from the way of sin. But then second, it guides us in the way of godliness. Another very familiar, well-memorized verse is Psalm 119, 105, where it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, the path that the psalmist is referring to here, of course, is the path of life, the path of blessing, which his word alone can guide us infallibly down. So we know which direction to take in this life. And that's something we actually see from the start in Psalm 119. The first section, verses 1 to 8, he starts off by saying, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with fear, their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. There is blessing, there is life, there is godliness, righteousness, fellowship with God when his word is hidden in our hearts and guiding us in that path. And this is very similar to what the Lord Jesus said to new believers in John 8, 30 and 30, 31 and 32. He says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. 
Free from what? Well, free from the dominion of sin in our lives and the devastating, deadly effects of it. Now, what could be greater motivation to memorize Scripture than that? To know that it is a matter of spiritual victory, of spiritual growth can be a matter of spiritual life or death. Near the end of World War II, the Allied forces were finishing off remaining Nazi resistance, and one particular unit was assigned a critical mission in the capital city of Berlin. To guarantee success, each soldier was ordered to carefully memorize a detailed map of all of Berlin's important military sites. And they had to do it in a single night right before the mission. Well, in just a few hours, each soldier in that unit had committed the map to memory. And the mission was a complete success. Now, several years later, the American military conducted an experiment to see if that original feat could be duplicated. They offered uh, a similar unit an attractive incentive. They could have an extra week leave if they could successfully carry out a comparable mission. But they couldn't do it. They failed. Why? What made the difference? Simple. The stakes were simply not high enough. It was only when memorizing the maps was understood to be vital for defending lives, defeating the enemy, ending the war, that the soldiers could do it with such great success. They needed the motivation of life or death, of victory or defeat. Well, church, we've just seen that when it comes to to memorizing Scripture, to hiding God's Word in our heart, the spiritual stakes are just as high. Memorizing Scripture is vital to winning the war against sin in our lives. It's vital to victory over the world. It's it's fundamental to finding freedom from the flesh. It's essential to safeguarding your soul against the enemy's attack. Which means, again, you and I need to get into the Word of God and more specifically, get the Word of God in you. I have stored up your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so in closing, let me just give you two suggestions for how you might start or continue in your uh, journey in scripture memorization, okay? Just two suggestions you can take or leave. First is Seeds Family Worship, which Alin, our children's director, uses with the kids in Equip class. They provide great music for kids and adults alike, and the lyrics are 100% from Scripture. These songs are actually really catchy, but they're not annoying like a lot of children's music. And they are just an incredibly effective way of memorizing God's Word without even trying. Uh, We've been listening to these songs for at least 10 years. When they first came out, we got the first ones. And right away, we found that these songs stuck in our minds. And even today, we and our kids, when certain scriptures come to mind, they come with the tune, right? We can remember them because the tune is there and it just helps bring it to mind. So I would, I would really recommend that for your kids, but also for you adults too. It's, it's a great resource. But then secondly, I also would recommend the Navigator's Topical Memory System. Uh, In my experience, this is the best memory system available. It's been around for a very long time. It's one of the oldest systems, and that's because it works. And you can get it in book form uh, in any bookseller, but you can also get a really handy app that I actually use on a regular basis. Now, this system is actually meant originally to be a discipleship tool. So I'd encourage you actually to consider getting this app or getting the book And doing it with another believer or doing it with a group. Maybe this would be something you want to do with a a life group so that you can be growing in Christ together, memorizing scriptures. It has important scriptures for all these different areas of the Christian life that you can then talk about. And the book actually helps you with that. Something to consider. 
Maybe you can start a mentoring relationship this way. But listen, however you choose to go about memorizing Scripture, just make sure you do. In some way, at some level, start wherever you are because it is essential to Christian growth and godliness. Let me tell you from firsthand experience, it is such a vital way and in some sense a simple way to grow in godliness. And just the joy as you find throughout your weeks and circumstances come up, there's, there's scripture that just immediately comes to you that can apply to this situation promises, warnings, insights. It's a beautiful thing. I just encourage us all to start up or continue in it, knowing that it will make a great difference in our lives and the lives of others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word, and we thank you that it it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We've seen the difference it makes in our lives, transforming us, growing us in godliness, guarding us from sin, And so, Lord, as we see the psalmist's example here of how he stored up your word in his heart, I pray that you would now, through the motivation of what it can do for us, keeping us from sin, that we would want to go from here and, again, either start memorizing scripture if we've never done it before, or continue on in it, knowing that it can make a great difference in our lives and the lives of others. And that, Lord, we would spur one another on and encourage each other in this as well as we seek to be in your word in every way you've asked us to, so that it can sanctify us and equip us for every good work. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.